Being teacher is always a pride because students learn from teachers. When teacher teaches the lesson, the delivery of lecture, that is the flow of teaching and the speed of teaching are very important. If teacher can deliver more content continuously, student will certainly cannot get everything whatever the teacher teaches. For instance, if teacher delivers at a very very high speed because he or she can, students cannot grasp all the content delivered by the teacher and this is obvious. So, the teacher has to figure out at what speed he or she must deliver in order to establish a perfect teaching learning experience, which is exactly the flow control. Let's see flow control in today's lecture. As usual, let's start the session with the outcomes. Upon the completion of the session, the learner will be able to Outcome number 1 Recall the link layer services Outcome number 2 We will understand what is flow control And outcome number 3 We will know the flow control protocols Let's recollect the various link layer services Basically, data link layer deals with frames And it is the second layer of the OSI reference model and this layer is responsible for moving data frames from one node to another. And the various services offered by data link layer are framing, error control, flow control, physical addressing and access control. Already we have seen framing and error control. In error control we have seen about error detection techniques and flow control is the topic of the day. Let's start with what is flow control. Suppose if we have a device A and we have another device B and these two devices are going to communicate with each other. Let's suppose if device A is sending some data frames at a very high speed but device B is not able to handle that much speed. At one fine point of time, device B will be losing all the data frames that was sent by device A. So before sending the data, both the devices must mutually agree upon the flow control mechanism. So we say flow control is a speed matching mechanism where the receiver should inform the sender at what speed the receiver can handle the data frames and later it becomes the responsibility of the sender to send at the speed that they mutually agree upon. So what flow control does? It coordinates the amount of data that can be sent before receiving an acknowledgement. In other words, flow control is a set of procedures that tells the sender how much data it can transmit before it must wait for an acknowledgement from the receiver. In networking, we consider both sender and receiver. But in flow control, we are mainly focusing on the receiver. Why? Because if there is a fast sender and there is a slow receiver, this will always cause a problem because the receiver cannot handle the speed of data reception that was sent by the sender. In case, if the sender is a slow sender and the receiver is a fast receiver, that's not at all an issue. So we are always focusing on the receiver. So receiver has a limited speed at which it can process incoming data and a limited amount of memory in which it stores the data, that is the incoming data. Whatever sender sends, the receiver will store everything in its memory and it will be processed by the receiver. If the receiver's memory is filling up with high speed than the processing speed, then ultimately all the data will be lost. Once the memory is full, all the data will be lost. So, receiver must inform the sender before the limits are reached and it should request the transmitter, that is the sender, to send fewer frames or stop temporarily so that the sending process and receiver process are encountering no loss. This is the basics behind flow control. Let's now talk about the protocols involved in flow control aspects. Basically, the protocols involved for flow control are categorized for noiseless channel and noisy channel. So this part is the noiseless channels and this side is the noisy channel. Let's focus on noiseless channel and the protocols involved in noiseless channel. The protocols involved in noiseless channels are simplest protocol and stop and wait protocol. The protocols involving noisy channels are stop and wait ARQ, go back and in ARQ, and Selective Repeat ARQ. ARQ stands for Automatic Repeat Request. We will be dealing about all these protocols in the upcoming lecture. And that's it guys. We recollected the various link layer services. We understood what is flow control. And we know the flow control protocols. 
I hope you guys enjoyed the session and thank you for watching.